Guys, what an absolute pleasure it is to have you on another Swim with the Shark special podcast episode. My name is Dan Diaz. I am your host, and I am super, super excited for the guests that we have here with us. Before we move things along, um, first of all, I want to thank you for your time, for being here. If you find value, please do me a favor, like and share this to your walls. Please tag myself, Dancito Gancito, on social media, as well as School of Sharks. And we love, love to hear you guys. Now, a little bit of housekeeping. We are using a streaming service called StreamYard. So while we want you to comment and we want you to participate and we want to hear your questions, the, the platform does require you to give StreamYard permission. So on the post, there's an opportunity there for you to go ahead and uh, basically um, let StreamYard know uh, who you are, and, and that way it'll it'll be posted. We've already got some live viewers. Um, please do me a favor in the comments section after you give StreamYard permission to let us know who you are. Um, let us know what city you're in and what is your focus of real estate. And as the podcast is happening, if there's something that um, kind of catches your eye, do me a favor and, and post that on the comment section. Anything that floats your mind. I really like this golden nugget, awesome you know, share that we're doing. Um, so, so that way we're able to really uh, hone in on, on what is bringing value uh, to you. So guys, let's go ahead and get started. And with uh, no further ado, I want to go ahead and uh, bring to uh, the stage our guest speaker, as well as the co-founder of School of Sharks, Callan Faulkner and Baskar Pandey. Callan, thank you so much for your time. Please, please do me a favor. Although a lot of people know who you are and what you do, pretend nobody knows you and just share with your audience a little bit about your background. No one knows me, Dan. No one knows me out here. No. Uh, thanks, guys, for having me. I'm excited. I am uh, a couple of things. What am I? Uh, I am a land investor. So I have a land investing company called Solterra Property. And I also have a consulting firm called REI Optimize. Um, I spent about 10 years of my career right after college doing marketing automation, CRM implementations, creating efficiencies for Fortune 5000 businesses, got into the land business, spent a ton of time building out my own systems, um, doing some cool things, and then eventually other folks saw what I was doing and wanted to talk. So that was the birth of the consulting company. Nice, nice, nice. Now tell us a little bit about, about, about your background. Where were you born? What did you do before you got really heavily involved into real estate? Uh -huh. And what I'd love to hear is what happened in your life that kind of lit the, uh, the, the light bulb moment and you're like, you know what, let me dive deeper into this. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so I was born here where I am right now, which is uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Before you say what the heck is wrong with her, uh, I went to high school here, I went to college here, <clears throat> my friends and family are all here, okay? So maybe one day I'll move, I understand. Uh, it is cold. That day is not today though. Not today, <laughs> I was just in Houston, it was 85 <laughs> degrees. I did shed a tear um, coming back to my, my winter wonderland. No, but I was born here, still live here. Um, I grew up in a wonderful, uh, household, my sister Morgan, uh, my parents, I was a big athlete. I played soccer and basketball. I played soccer in college um, locally here, which is where I met my wife, Hannah. We got married uh, two a year ago now, about a year and a couple months. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Uh, we have been together for almost 10 years, so nothing really changed, but it was great to have everyone together and do the big party. Uh, <clears throat> my my kind of career took a little bit of a turn when I was in college. I wanted to be a health major. I'm still very passionate about health and wellness and <clears throat> optimizing your body and feeling the best you can possibly feel. I can definitely talk about that today. But I, uh, for those of you that know um, Cutco Knives, I got a job doing selling Cutco. I'm like, I would never do this. But of course, I started doing it and like broke all the office records. I'm like, oh all right, I got to go into business. So I switched from health into uh, a business major, graduated with an entrepreneurship degree, and, and since then have kind of been on the on the startup train. And um, I still very much love the health and wellness piece. And it's actually something I'm super passionate about is helping entrepreneurs um, really optimize optimize that 
the part of their life because as most of us know we we grind really hard and we sometimes forget to to take care of ourselves too so that's yeah kind of, yeah and i'm glad you you brought that up callan because i i feel i know i i failed in the beginning <sighs> here that we don't take care of our mind and our body as much as we should and only until we realize that can our business catapult would you say that that's an accurate phrase couldn't agree more i mean it started when i was in this commission only sales role and I'm, i was started figuring out okay if i feel really good a i'm gonna enjoy my life b i'm just gonna work more efficiently i'm gonna work better i'm gonna make more calls and make more money I mean, it's not always that linear but what are we doing all this for? We're doing all this so that I can go back to my wife and my family and have a beautiful evening and hang out with them and have energy to, to do whatever I want. So this doesn't make any sense if I'm not feeling great. I love that. I love that. I love that. Now let's get vulnerable if we can for a minute, but before we do that, let's talk about strengths. When it comes to business, considering your personality, what would you say is your biggest strength? Uh, are you guys familiar with the Enneagram test? Have you heard this before? It's kind of a personality test. I am not. Tell us more. So it's phenomenal. The Enneagram is designed to help you understand how you view the world, how you react to certain situations, how you handle trauma. There's nine different categories. So I highly recommend everyone. It's E-N-N-E-A-G-R-A-M. It is phenomenal to help you understand your partner better, where you guys would get into conflict, even understanding a business partner. So I have all my employees take it. Obviously, my wife's taken it, and it's really helpful to understand. So I'm a, I'm a three, which means that it's called the achiever. I want, I want to achieve. I have a view of the world that the more that I achieve, the more I will be loved which is mm. we'll go into weaknesses in a second. Um, we're going deep. We're well, you said the boulder. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, so I think one of my strengths is that I have a hunger. I have a drive and a three is also obsessed with efficiency. If it takes me a few more steps to put the garbage in the garbage can, but if I just move the place where the garbage can was full time to another spot, I will move the garbage can mm. to save the steps. So any task that takes me a little bit too long, I am my brain is constantly thinking, how can I make this faster? How can I make this better? Wow. Wow. Hey, that's that's awesome. That's that's super, sounds, super cool. Sounds like I, the dots connected early on. I mean, a lot of people don't figure that stuff out until much later. Totally. What am I good at? Why am I wanting to do what I'm wanting to do? Sounds like you found that out early on. You switched your, your majors, you took the test. And it puts you on this path that not only making your own business more efficient, but now getting in the business of making other people's businesses more efficient. Totally. Well, it nice. was, the only reason why we did it, it was in the premarital counseling that we did, the, the gal that married us, she was like, okay, you guys need to take this because I need to understand what each of you are. Well, me being a three, she, you know, immediately said to Hannah, she was like, well, is there, does Callan have a tendency to maybe not pay attention to you when she's working? And I was like, yeah, literally every day. All the time. Question. She's like, she didn't hear what I'm saying. I'm like, well, the woman was like, well, you know, she, when she's focused on a task, she it's really hard for threes to hear anything else. So you you really have to make sure she's looking at you. So it's like, oh my God, this is a wow. good This is, she, she knows me. Are you able to post that test yeah. on, on the comments or the website yeah. if you have it? When you I'm, I'm just glad to hear. That's awesome. I'm not the only one with that problem. So guys in our audience, those yeah. are who are listening, this really is a real estate focused podcast, regardless of what y'all are hearing right now. It really is real estate focused. But there. Man, this is gold. Oh, I love goodness. this. It's all connected. I'm going to take that test. Dude. For sure. You can have your spouse take it too. Mm -hmm. Game changer. Because you can, you can search like, okay, Enneagram 3, Enneagram 2 relationship. My wife is a 2 which means she believes she'll be loved more if she helps people. So she's a yes girl. If you ask her to throw her cousin's best friend a birthday party, she'll do it. And then I'm sitting here like, why are you doing that? That doesn't make any sense. But now I know she did too. So it makes sense. I understand. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Let's, let's dive. I know a lot of, uh, of the audience member wants to 
um, really get a ton of value when it comes to your specialties. And there's a reason. No, normally, Baskar doesn't join me, even though I ask him and beg him. He normally doesn't <laughs> join me. Um, but this time, he says, you know what? I really want to be on this one because... I did. This was Alan like is talking like, to people I wouldn't be drinking a beer with. Ah, oh, I love it. Right back at If you're a beer drinker, are you a beer drinker or a wine drinker? Your answer will define our relationship. <laughs> I am whatever you want me to be. I do love a good oh. beer. <laughs> I do love a good beer. I also love, um, you know, my health vibes. The biodynamic, nice French wine. Nice. Awesome. Nice. Red or white? <laughs> Bordeaux or Burgundy? Well, when it's 30 degrees out or zero, we got to go oh, red. Oh, it's going to be red. Nice. So did you know that some of the best, better valued wines in the world that are almost identical to the Bordeaux region of France is found in South Africa? Really? Yeah. Stalinbach region. Okay. Again, guys, I promise you this is real estate related. So my wife and I, we were in South Africa a couple of years ago before the pandemic, specifically because of, of the uh, Stalinbach region. It was discovered about 40 years ago that the terroir is almost identical to the Bordeaux region of France, the altitude, the climate, the humidity, the rainfall, um, the soil composition. Wow. And what a few growers did is they actually purchased vines from um, several wineries in South Africa and they transplanted them there. Oh, cool. And the wine is is blended, which is, as you're very much well aware of, it's majorly blended in, in the Bordeaux region. So they they, they follow the same... Uh, patterns, uh, the the same blending, and it's phenomenal wine. The other day, I found in Costco a 2013 bottle, um, Lady May, mm. Stalinbach region, and uh, it was 22 bucks, 22, 23 dollars. Mm. And I, I asked, I, I I asked the 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 wine guy, I'm like, would you be terribly upset if I try it right now? And he's like, no, I guess I don't care. Open it up. And we were we were trying the wine at, at Costco, and I was just blown away by it. I asked him how how many of these bottles do you have, hoping he would say more than the one bottle I was tasting. And he says, "Man, nobody knows South African wine. We have about forty bottles, you know, in the back." And you I'm like, buying them all. That's I awesome. bought them yeah. all on a blind tasting, Helen. I would easily pay ninety to hundred and ten dollars for the really? same Bro. taste, and I bought them all. And he's like, "You're nuts." I'm like, "Thank you." Call me when there's more South African wine. Enneagram so. and South African wine. That's what you came for. You got that's, the good. That's, that's funny. <laughs> the life hacks. But you know what? Let's let's dive deep into, into systems, into lead gen, into automation, which I know that is something that you're very, very strong. That's also something that Baskar is. I, I constantly learn from him when it comes to that. So. Why don't we share a little bit, if someone is already active in real estate, maybe they've done a couple deals, maybe they know how the process works, but they want to do maybe their first step in automating something and bringing in some sort of systems, what would you say would be a good place to start? Yes, love this question. And I love Baskar's answer on this too. My first step, which is not the step that I want to do, trust me, I'm a visionary three Enneagram is document your process. It doesn't have to be high level. It could be a freaking printer piece of paper with crayons documenting it. I don't care. I have so many people come to me and say, I want a new CRM. I want to build this. I want to have my lead flow. I want to build a pipeline. I want to have automation. You cannot automate a process that doesn't exist. Until you know your process. Exactly. It doesn't have to be exactly detailed down to the email template you're sending the realtor, right? When the PA is signed. Right. But when the purchase agreement is signed, what are the tasks that have to happen? Let our right. realtor know. We have to start the due diligence process. We have to have that stuff documented. Step number one, hundred percent. Nice. So, so documentation and, and documentation, documentation <laughs> is the first step. Yep. Now, uh, if you do a semi good job about this, yep. in about two, three, four deals, you you should have a pretty nice little kind of workflow of yep. okay, you know all the steps that are that are being done. Yep. What could be a good second step once you have that? Yep. So it depends on, I think, the size of your team and really what your goals are for the system. If you're a one stop shop, it's just you in the business. 
obviously we don't need these really advanced call reports and dashboards and analytics and you know, all, all these things that I need to manage my team of six is a completely different tool that you would need to just have a, a basic pipeline. Yes. So maybe we'll start with like a phase one CRM implementation for a real estate investor. The most important thing that you're going to need is some sort of place where you're going to be able to follow up with your leads. Ideally, there is a way where you can set tasks for yourself. I am a big task girl. I... Are not- you a to to doer, task writing, task yeah. checking, mark offer? Honestly, I'm not a marker offer. I'm just like I need it to be in somewhere because there's just so much going Do you on. You just no go not go back to marking it off. Literally, my <laughs> sister. Seeing those tasks stuff. on paper or on a list somewhere is like half the weight off your mind, right? Exactly. Exactly. We started implementing that recently, also, and it's just changed the way things get done now. I just feel like it's a breath of fresh air or just it's mm-hmm. a sigh of relief. Our The human brain is meant to be a processing tool and we use it like a storage database. Right. And that's mm-hmm. why our processing is so slow because you're thinking about the dry cleaner pickup and the, your wife asked you to get milk and the, all this stuff is here. It has to get out. And if it's on a notebook, that's okay. It's on your phone, whatever. But obviously in a perfect world, it's in some sort of system and maybe there's a separate a to-do task list right and a, and a business you know your your lead follow-up but either way it's got to be documented somewhere right perfect this is I, I love that I'm, I'm taking notes and putting it in the comments the brain is not for storing data it is for it's processing, processing it yes and you slow it down I, I i love that i love that so um let's say someone is a little bit um um kind of in the process, they have a little bit of capital, maybe they have one or two, you know, team members, what would be a good in your experience allocation of capital? Like what are the first maybe systems investment, whether it's a one time or a monthly, what are some of the tools that you have found? Uh, And, and, and you Baskar, please chime in as well. Some of the tools that you would say, you know what, these are probably the first subscriptions, the first tools, the first things that you want to buy for for your business. Yep. Um, I'm going to base this on two things. As an entrepreneur, we always want to be thinking about getting things off of our plate, tasks off of our plate that don't make us money and don't light us up and aren't our zone of genius. Mm -hmm. So if you are, so I, for example, I'm more of a salesperson. I'm great on the phone with the seller. That's my wheelhouse. I can do that all day long. I can negotiate, I can talk, whatever. I don't really like the data, the comping, the, that whole thing is like, ugh, it's fine. I can do it. But I just don't like it as much. So as I say, you know, what is your first thing you need to do? Remember that, you know, if you're, if you are not really salesy, you may want to quickly invest in, in an acquisitions manager that can mm-hmm. take that over and really invest in a system that they're going to be able to use day to day. That's going to, maximize their efficiency. So I'm going to pause one minute because there's two beliefs and I think they're both valid. It just kind of depends on your personality, but I want to, I want to get an idea for your personal belief. There are some who believe that you should focus on your weaknesses so that you can improve them. There are some who believe that you should focus on your strengths and either outsource or delegate your weaknesses. What's your take on that? Oh, I delegate my weaknesses all that long. 100% the same 100%. way. Focus on my strengths. A hundred percent. And that's something that I think a lot of people need need to kind of realize. They, they think I want to be a well-rounded person, which that sounds pretty on paper. Mm-hmm. But in practice, it slows you down. Yeah, it slows yeah. you down. So focus on your strengths. If your strengths are not sales, what do you say, Callan? Hire what? Hire it out. Hire an acquisitions manager. Hire an acquisitions you manager. To. You have to. Love that. Them. Love that. Uh, so in terms of systems, I can answer that. I mean, if, if kind of the basics, if we need, oh, I'm going to call it a CRM. Most of you probably know what a CRM is, but I'm just going to pretend like you don't. A CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management Tool. That was the tool. That was the name that was created like 10 years ago when a businesses had a Rolodex physical paper of all of their customers. And then technology came along and they started to create systems to manage your customers. Think of this as the system that's managing all of the seller leads and buyer leads that have ever reached out to you at any point in the past 
and you have them in this database. Ideally, this system is sending them some regular emails, maybe texting them regularly. It has tasks in there to remind you, hey, I need to call this guy next week. Maybe there's an ability to create a purchase agreement out of there. Maybe there's an integration with DocuSign, an integration with PandaDoc. All those things are fancy, cool, down the road. For, for right away, the most important thing is that you have some sort of pipeline. So I kind of like that Kanban view where you can see, okay, I have all the leads that need to be comped, all the leads where the offer is ready, all the leads that have sent an offer, all the leads that have posted us, all the leads that are on hold. You know where each of those people are in the process. Again, back to the brain, right? If I just know where everything's at, I can log in on a Monday. I've had a really great weekend. I'm not thinking about work at all. And in two minutes, I'm fully up to speed on where my opportunities are at. I, I love that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. I love it. Guys, if you guys are getting value, um, I, I want you to do me a favor. Like and share this live stream to your personal walls. Do me a favor. Tag myself. Tag Callan. Tag Bascar. Tag School of Sharks. Tag whoever the hell you want to tag. I don't care, but tag us so that we know the love is there. Facebook and all these stinking social media outlets love this algorithm. Um, so, so really, really, if you guys are getting value, um, do this. Number two, if you have a question, I got news for you. All of us charge a lot of money for consultation services. So here's your chance. Go ahead and put your questions about systems land, um, you, our, our way of doing things in, in the comments, and right. we'll take care of everyone's comments today. Yeah. Number three, let us know a little bit who you are. Give your name, your city, and your specialty. We always want to know who's, uh, who's uh, here on the thread with us. So thank you so much. And let's talk about something. I'm sure you're very familiar with time boxing. Time boxing. It's something that I okay. only recently discovered and have become a huge fan. Are you familiar with it? Do you use it? Do you like it? Do you not like it? What's your take, Helen? Can I share my screen on here? I don't know if I'm allowed to. Just I, I don't know. I mean, you have my permission. I don't know if the system allows Try it. it. We'll find <laughs> out. Obsessed with boxing. Literally obsessed with it. I have my entire week. Are you able to? to the minute. Let's see. Can I share my screen? Share screen. Share my weekly template map and schedule. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to add it to the stream. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have never been more productive in my life than when I'm I put very this. lost. I'm colorblind, Kellen. Oh, then this isn't going to work. For no, you. I am so sorry. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, oh, no. Well, you can still see it. The answer would be if you're colorblind, you wouldn't know that that's in colors. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, yes. And this is, I think, where you're going. But this is something um, I got from my mentor, Taylor Welsh. Um, it's also in the book, Buy Back Your Time by Dan Martell. He talks about putting together your perfect week. And I now have an executive assistant, which has changed my life. And so she kind of facilitates my week for me. And so when she sees this, she knows exactly what's going on. I don't book anything before 1130 on Mondays. I try not to have anything before 939 because I'm very, uh, my brain is mostly alert in the morning. We could talk about circadian rhythms and how to know when your brain is most alert. But yes, this has totally changed my life. And when I have my get things done time, that is super focused, dedicated time on me working on the business. This is beautiful. This is amazing. That's beautiful. Now, who yeah. developed how much time you would allocate per box? Because I, I did notice oh, that's that. That's a great uh, question. I have no idea. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> give, me your, give me your feedback, Dan. I love What's it. it? I, I love it. I'm going to throw in something something there. Please it sounds, do. Sounds like, Callan, you, you're you almost, I, I mean, I didn't hear you say you come from an engineering background, but you think like an engineer. Are I you? do. You yeah. do come from an engineering background. No, no, I don't come from an engineering background, right. but my brain is very much, I need boxes and charts. and. Flowers. I was going to say that because everything that you're saying, I've been pretty much putting checks next to, hey, this is what I do too. I come from an engineering background. Mm -hmm. I left that life behind last year. Um, so I'm relatively new to entrepreneurship and land flipping and, and doing things to help others, et cetera. But I just 
inherently found myself good at it just because my engineering background. So now That's when fair. you were talking about things like mapping your processes, I was like, that's the first thing I did, not because someone told me to, but because that just naturally came as something I should do, have everything visually and then, yeah. you know, textually written down in steps. Baskar cracks me up when we started, you know, connecting and meeting and, and having, he would always show up with like a paper and pad. <laughs> and I'd show up with a drink in my hand. <laughs> We've 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 known each other. I start. Nope. I now start bringing you know paper and pen, and he's open to having a drink in his hand. Absolutely. You know, so. See, I'm, I'm so happy that I'm I'm starting to think like not an engineer now, and it's it's made a difference. The second thing you said, CLM for your tasks and for your just being able to store stuff in one spot. I think just to add, to kind of just corroborate what you're saying, you know, to add um, a, a seal of my approval behind what you're saying is exactly those two things everyone should start with. Get a process tool. It can be free when you're starting, something like Whimsical, something like Asana, something that just allows you to write stuff down about your business that you need 100% clarity on first. Yeah. And then build or, or get a tool then don't people ask us all the time what CRM to use? What is the best CRM out there? It's the, one like the, one, the one that you use is the best <laughs> CRM out there. There's so many out there and they all work. True. Yeah. But eventually with those, just those two basic tools, you can correct me if I'm wrong, with a process that you clearly understand and can articulate and a tool that allows you to take action on those, yeah. you can do everything in your business at the beginning anyway. For sure. And don't right. be afraid really to start really simply. If this is a Trello board that you just use to move deals along, you know, cards along in the process, yeah, I can't text my sellers in there and I can't call my sellers, but maybe you spin up an open phone line for $20 a month and you've got mm -hmm. free Trello. You use both those tools. Exactly. For free, like literally for $20 a month, you can run a, a half million dollar business. I think. 100%. Of course. Uh, we use the crap out of Trello. We use the crap. I have eight numbers with open phone. Every yeah. single team member has open phone. Yeah. Mailers have open phone numbers. We sure. use all the advanced features also. We use like the call routing and the groups. And we use open phone fully. I mean, we're, you know, seven figure business and we're still using open phone because I love it and it works. Wow. It works. I'm so happy that you use open phone. <laughs> I love yeah. open phone guys. And they've done some really cool things. They're upgrading all their analytics and they did they oh, yeah. listen. That has been really great. I really recommend open yeah. phone, even if you're a very beginner. Nice. 100%. nice. We got a question. Pablo Morales. How do you find the best land deals and how to find buyers? Oh my God. Like what we could spend four hours on this. We could spend a whole week, probably a boot camp. <laughs> let's uh let's break it down. How to find the best land deals. Well, there's land deals that are for sale right now that have been sitting there for a long time on the MLS. That's a great option. The the biggest thing with land deals, a lot of land investors um, they bounce from county to county. They, they do a lot of different states. So they're, they're doing a lot of mail is typically the, the way that land investors find deals. That is um, kind of always been the most common way. Land investors are a little bit behind the times on the, on the marketing technology side compared to wholesale apartment, you know, multifamily investors. So um, just to even step one uh, step back, Pablo, this is the typical process of a land investor. You, if you're brand new, you're probably going to go to the local county and you're going to ask them how to pull a list of property owners, land owners in that area. You're going to have to filter down on land only. Um, there's a couple ways of doing that. There's also some tools out there like PropStream and Property Radar and Data Tree. You guys probably all know these tools where you can pull a list of landowners. Um, you can absolutely send them a letter, say, hey, I'm looking to purchase your property. You can, a lot of land, land investors put a price on there. They might put a range on there. Um, my team is personally the number one source of leads for us is texting. So we're uh, doing texting to find leads. We've been texting for about two years and um, it's just the easiest uh, in the most, it's the quickest, the quickest, the best. Thank you. <laughs> it is. One hundred percent of my deals came from text last year. Oh wow, Vascar, that's amazing. That's amazing. One hundred percent. So um, that's been very successful. Um, we're also doing ringless voicemails. We're playing around with cold calling. 
you could email, you know, Pablo, it depends on if you are doing a lot of people. So we're doing a, a lot. We're, we're going to be reaching out to probably 200,000 property owners this year. If you're very specialized in the southwest portion of San Antonio, Texas, I would recommend that you are targeting people directly. You're picking up the phone, you're calling them, you're texting them, you're emailing them. Um, and I wouldn't worry too much about having to do this mass marketing. So kind of it depends on, on your goals on the acquisition side. And then how to find buyers. I mean, we list all of our properties on the MLS. We list on land.com, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. We have Do you closes. close on them and list them? Yeah, we've done some double closes in the past, but honestly, they've caused me a lot of anxiety. <laughs> it gets really close to the deadline and I'm like, I don't like this. I don't have control. So we, um, we've actually brought in some investment partners and we are now um, closing. We obviously will do, you know, for some bigger properties right now. No, no, no. My, my question was, do, do you ever uh, list on the MLS when it's only under contract? Yes. Or, or, or do you close? We did do, we, we do, and we have done that. I'm trying to get away from it because now we have fun. We have a funding partner that just wants to pump cash and just buy properties, but I'm not against it. It's just run really close to the closing date a few times and it's, <laughs> yes, we know that feeling all too well. Yeah, I'm just like when it's when I'm sitting at home with my family thinking about it. Those are the moments where I'm like, okay, I don't want to do this. I just got, we just gotta buy it or get them into a, a situation like Dan teaches. Get them into a, a seller financing agreement where we're not putting all of our cash in up front. We have we have time and we can better use our cash. Yeah, that's even. For people who find it hard or not familiar with raising capital just yet, that technique works. We have started implementing that technique. We're pitching seller finance every time. The sellers love it. They get more money for their property. Yep. We love it. We don't have to come out of pocket on deals. It gives us enough time to market the deal. Yep. So it can be a great tool. Seller financing can be an amazing tool if you don't have people with deep pockets. Totally. Yeah. We we recently started doing a three offer. So the first offer, the cheapest is the cash offer. Second offer is 20% down with monthly payments for eight years. And then the Did third Did you say offer. eight years? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's an oddly specific number. How, mm -hmm. why, when, where? How We've been just saying that's, I mean, people will try to fight back and it's like, that's what our, that's what our finance team. How is. did you come up with eight years? Well, we have, we have a note buyer that always does eight years and uh, no one's mm -hmm. ever said anything about it and so and it all the numbers kind of make sense for most of the deals we're doing something that we can handle so but what are you doing are you doing 15 i'm doing i'm doing 135 years if i can no i'm kidding <laughs> the longer the better well, until the the sun is no longer with us yeah <laughs> so when it comes to land um because we do buy land it's a small portion of our portfolio and 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 i probably will only buy land uh, with seller finance terms. I probably will only buy land because it, it just it just gives me the time and the flexibility to do something with them. Yep. Personally, what I do with it is I, I figure out what my exit strategy is going to be and I come up with a monthly payment that will roughly equal half of what my monthly payment coming in. So whether I wrap it or whether I lease it, I lease a lot of the land uh, myself. Yeah. So I kind of know, okay, well, I'm going to be charging five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars per month. Um, my monthly payment will be no more than half. So what I, I, I structure is I say, hey, you want $30,000? The most I can pay per month is $250. I will pay you those $250 until the entire debt's paid off. Yeah. So I don't necessarily focus on time, which is why it struck a chord with me. I'm like, oh, wow, that's, like a, that's not like a round number, like 10 or 5 or 15. Well, the only reason we're doing in these deals that we're doing the seller financing on for us. So for example, we have a, a property right now that's zoned ag agricultural. And right now as is it's worth about 600,000. If we rezone this, which the County is already said, no problem to rezone it to multifamily, it'll be worth about 1.2 million. So for us, we're just trying to buy time to get the rezone done, find a buyer, flip it and sell it. So yes, I might hold for it for like, three years, that would be really unusual. Typically the reason mm. is about four months if it's slow, maybe five, and then selling it. If it's slow, it would be a year to get it sold in this area. So honestly, it's just more about saving the, the cash for us than it is on making sure the margins make sense. What was your third offer? You mentioned three offers, right? Oh, that's right. Oh, 
Nice fast car. Come on. The third the engineer offer, in the room. <laughs> third offers no down payment, just uh, payments. So the so second what offer, is what was again your second offer? Twenty percent down plus the payments. So oh, gotcha. The, the cash offer is the cheapest. So let's just say you know I pay you hundred grand now. Yeah. Whatever. I pay you one twenty five. And with this structure, 20% down, or I could pay you 140 with this yeah. third structure adjustment. What have you seen people lean more towards? I mean, the the seller financing, you know, it's actually funny. I would say it's, I mean, mostly cash. They, they mostly would want that, but they're trying to get, you know, option number two down to the cash price. But it's interesting mm -hmm. because it kind of gives you a little bit more of a stepping stone because they'll, you know, it's more of a negotiation versus just coming with a cash offer. You're you're really kind of like right. More power. No options. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so almost turning into a better way to negotiate the cash offer for us. We have one that it's a they've had a farm for a really long time, and they were like, yeah, I mean, let's talk to our siblings and let's see what makes sense. They didn't need the money. They've got other farms, and they're like, look, I mean, we might just want to go with the one where we get the most money you know eight years isn't that long of a time i think that's the spin on it too with the eight years because yeah. you know over for, and done with relatively quickly right it's not like i can i know i can see eight years from now if i say 20 or 30 you know, that's where it's like well i'm not even going to be able to enjoy this money but it is a flip so it's just kind of a different, a different oh. pantech which if if y'all are not connected with ray he's like a super smart genius that nobody knows uh, he's around, um, but he's a very, very, very smart genius when it comes to creative financing. He says, we've done houses for $100,000, $1,000 a month for 100 payments at 0%. Works out to just a little over uh, eight years. Again, 100 payments divided by 12 months is 8.33 years. We've done quite a few of these. So I do whenever, yeah, it's it's interesting. I, and I love you know talking to other, to other investors on how they present their offers. We normally present them as cash terms and seller finance. Oh, interesting. That's the verbiage that we use. And for terms, we just say 15 years equal monthly payments. Yep. 15 years equal monthly payments. Whatever the monthly payments are going to be. Very rarely have I found a situation where the monthly payment that I'm paying to the seller won't allow me to profit somehow. I don't think I've ever encountered them. The math always kind of, kind of shakes out. Yep. So usually the responses are, well, what's the down payment? What's the interest? You know, that kind of thing. And, and I, a lot of students have, have seen me do this. And I, I do this over the phone. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm, I don't know what you're talking about. And I play dumb for about so 45 good. seconds. So good. I'm sorry. What's that? Uh, I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> Interesting or interest? Uh, interest? Is that, uh, that sounds interesting. Let's talk about more about that. <laughs> Um, and of course, I, I, I get out of that role pretty quickly, you know, because because you can't totally act stupid for more than 45 seconds. And I say, you know what? I want to pause you right there. You're referring to a financing function. And that's totally OK. Yeah. We can talk about you being the bank, even though I get it. You're not really the bank. You're not really going to be loaning me money, you know, to buy this land. I, I get it. You want to be the bank. I have no problem with that. But I kind of want to, to make it clear that that wasn't what I was talking about. I was talking about a simple, straightforward payment plan that gets you paid everything that the property is worth. That's it. Now, if you want to throw in down payments and interest and all that good stuff, and you want to be the bank, I have no problem, provided you are fair to me and you treat me like a bank customer. So I want to get one thing out of the way. If you want to be the bank and you want to treat me like a bank customer, you will have to give me 30 years to repay. Are you comfortable giving me 30 years, just like the bank is. And I shut up. And usually that's when they're like, oh God, no, 30 years. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. I said, I know. Most people don't really want to be the bank once they realize what it entails to be the bank. Yes, you get a little bit of money down and yes, you get interest, but it's not free interest. You have to give me 30 years to repay that's the reason I didn't present it from the get-go. Most people at the end of the day, they just want to sell the property. They don't want to lose their shorts. They don't want to discount it. And they want to sell it for most that they can. So that's why I talked about a payment plan, about a term offer. But the choice is yours. Do you want to talk about being the bank or do you want to talk about a term offer? 
And, we, and it, go, it ping pongs back and forth. Yeah. But I hold them accountable to that. You want to be the bank? No problem. You have to give me 30 years to repay. It's really good. And I, I stick with my guns on that. I really, really, really do. And and it works. Awesome. I mean, it, it does work. It's awesome. It does work. So, Kevin, um, I got a question for you. Do who, who presents these offers to your sellers? Are you the one negotiating? No, we have a, um, an acquisitions manager. Her name is Kim. She's in Ohio. Um, and she oversees our four Filipino VAs. They're the ones that are doing the texting, taking the first call, prepping the lead, call the county, talk to the broker, get some opinions. And then Kim comes in to do final DD, final negotiation, review the offer and, and close. Got it. Got it. And then... Do you have a team for Dispo as well? Yes. So Mandy is our sales and marketing manager. She's here in Minneapolis, um, a friend of my business partner. And she oversees everything Dispo. So she's talking to buyers. She's working with our realtor. Um, we do have a VA that's doing like the posting using ChatGPT for our listings. Are she- you really? Oh, hey, tell me about yes. that. I'm I'm just reading it on the sidelines. Dude, it is it's insane. I pay the $20 a month. My bookkeeper was like, what is chat AI? I'm like, don't cancel that subscription. You can cancel anything else. Just don't cancel that one. So chat GPT is artificial intelligence. You can ask it a question. Let's see if I can share on here. I'll we'll do an example live. So let's say that we have a um, new property that's coming to market. Um, please create, I've got an ultra wise this might um a real estate listing you can mix all stuff they'll figure it out for a four acre um multi-family zoned property in uh spring hill florida lots of traffic uh no no that's not gonna make sense um right for development vacant land must sell quickly so those those problems. Let, let me let me pause the podcast. Let me pause the podcast one second, guys. If you're watching now, please do yourselves a favor and make yourself sound like an authority and like and share this podcast because this <laughs> is off the hook. I'm learning right Let's now. Go. go ahead, Callan. Here we go. That's live. This is live, dude. This is awesome. welcome to this fantastic four acre located in the highly sought after area of Spring Hill, Florida. Tell me more about Spring Hill, Florida. I've I'm on the wait list for Chat GPT four, um, so I can actually nice. buy the plus. And yes. I started using this for. Why is there a wait list? Because everybody so wants in. Everyone in their mom, man. Everybody yeah. wants in. People yep. could not pay them twenty dollars a month fast enough. I am in. I was in immediately. Like just absolute wild. So, I mean, just this and this, right? I mean, if you don't know much about Spring Hill, I mean, in a lot of, a lot of these bigger properties, investors are coming in from all over. They're like, well, what is Spring Hill? I mean, it seems good. Like you need to give them more description. Let's say create a video script for this property. They wanted to create a YouTube video about this property. Opening shot property from the air, showing the lush trees. Maybe you wanted to send something to a drone guy to just give you something. I can can tell Dan is blown away right now. (laughs) You guys have no idea. This thing is absolutely insane on the weekends. I've just been playing, like try, just try anything. I was just trying around, like playing around with getting new text templates, uh, writing a contract. Like, hey, I needed a, um, a JV agreement for a realtor. This thing can one hundred percent. So I told you earlier that I have a marketing agency that I run. We do people's websites. One of the biggest challenges used to be coming up with the right content. Not every client can provide ad copies or content copies, and we would struggle for for their niche writing up exactly what they wanted. Right. And I have clients from all walks of life. I have attorneys. I have landscapers. I have realtors. I have just from the very niche depths of businesses as my website clients. And I would have to manually research and come up with ad copies for them in the past. Well, enter chat GPT and my life is so much easier. We can turn it on websites quicker. It's amazing. So so what is, okay. I'm, I'm okay. I'm being educated. Back to being the bank. So the VA (laughs) like copies and paste these responses. 
Yeah, they could take these responses and they can put it in the description of your mm. land.com listing. You're honestly, we've been rewriting our broker's listing. I love you and your realtors that are watching. Love you so much. But you know, mm. their listing is like a paragraph or the little descriptions of paragraph. We put together a full, like, here's more about Spring Hill. Here's what you can do with multifamily. Here's what it's zoned for. Like, you can just copy and paste the basics of the zoning, what you can do, and it'll write you a nice paragraph about what you can do with the property. Wow. Yeah. Guys, do you have any questions? Or are you as just <laughs> dumbfounded as I am that you don't even know what to ask? Because that's Dan's just I'm late to the party. Right, right. I've always been late to the technology party. <laughs> um, I do want to disclose okay. I still have a Hotmail email address that's questionable you know? yeah. um for a long time i still had an aol account <laughs> i thoroughly enjoyed netscape navigator please tell us your age without much. telling us your age <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i am you know thanks to baskar i've been brought to you know the 20th century i'm not even on the 21st century i'm just at the 20th we're getting century. in there slowly but surely we're getting in there Exactly. Unbelievable. Okay. So what other things can chat GPT do for your business? I guess we're just going to go down that rabbit hole. Dude, oh my God, what could it do for your business? Okay. Can it, can it, can it like, um, like, like be integrated with a chat software? Absolutely. So, so, uh, it's, it's not quite as straightforward. Okay. You know, I, I just jumped in there, Callan. I'm sure you wanted oh, to. Do. Well, what I was going to say is, like, if the normal person wouldn't be able to just like say, right. you know, be a chat, but you can, of course, use this as your back end yeah. and develop. And you can, one of two things, right? Like, you, like she said, you can manually have somebody relay messages back and forth. Mm -hmm. But there are APIs available now that you can dig into from the back end and have Chat GPT respond on your behalf. There is some software available now. So now, as soon as Chat GPT came into the picture, People developed chatbots that you can hook into ChatGPT via API. And when people ask a question or they want to chat, ChatGPT would respond through the back end, pretending as if it was a real person. What did you, what did you, my, my screen is tiny. What did you oh, sorry. ask or request? Okay. So I just said create a 10 step email sequence for a potential buyer that wants to buy land for me. I want to follow up with them. Sure. He's a 10 step email sequence. Thank you for your interest in our land for sale. We wanted to touch base, introduce ourselves, let you know, we appreciate your interest, land details, pricing, financing. This isn't perfect. Right. But at least yeah. it, it gets for me. It's like a, it's kind of like writer's block when you have a blank page, mm. it's really hard to start with a blank page, but if they give me these, you know, make, make the emails longer, and use exclamation points. I use exclamation points in my emails. I don't like the, uh... yeah, it's use enthusiasm. So they'll, you know, welcome to our land, land for, you know, welcome to our land for sale, right? That's not perfect, but <laughs> your first name, thanks for your interest in our land for sale. We're thrilled to have you considering this property. My name is Blink. I'm the seller of this beautiful piece of land. We want to touch base. Cause so if you had a CRM, let's just say, and you had a buyer reach out on Facebook marketplace, let's say you sent them an email, um, with with some with the property details you could literally just copy and paste this and then put them on a drip sequence so that they just get this email and then this email and they just get emailed every day for 10 days about this land and they're writing it writing the emails for you right wow. now amazing. that is amazing does this work in spanish okay. rewrite in spanish this will be a good test i don't know Oh, come on. Oh, man. Game over. Good. Is it? I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't tell. It's a oh, tiny shoot, little screen. Shoot. Hang on. Is it in Spanish? Yeah. Yeah. Game over. Oh, my God. I'm going to. And I'm it has accents. Are you my, kidding me? It has world. accents. Insane. Insane. I'm telling you, this is like next level. I'm like, I think I'm going to, I want to come out with a course that's just like how to, to have a seven figure land business using ChatGPT. Like, I love you, VAs. You're incredible. But yeah. we, I mean, this is right? a great idea. You should do that. I will be in attendance <laughs> for sure. Heck yes. And I'm, I'm also going to include a section about ChatGPT in my next systems, yeah. uh, systems webinar or systems course. But oh, it's crazy. changing so it. rapidly right in front of us that it's not even a lot of people are actually about to be out of work or out of business. Because yeah, of ChatGPT's uh, 
you know, mainstream usage now. What they what they also did was ChatGPT has been around, but it wasn't made available to the common public. It was mostly the people in those circles. And since it's now commercially available, they did a trial run for, for people to come and sign up for free. Till date, this is this one tool has seen the fastest adoption of any company out there, faster than Netflix, faster than Instagram, faster than anything else out there. If you look at those statistics, wow. it took some companies to reach a million subscribers X number of weeks, X number of days. ChatGPT was like, if I'm not mistaken, maybe hours or like a couple of days. And they were at capacity. They had to shut servers. I mean, people were waiting in queues online to be able to log in. Completely. Wow. That's it's crazy. That's amazing. Even, you can just get your guys' brain going because this is a whole nother, it's like learning how to search on Google. Like, you know, mm -hmm. that's not a normal thing. You had to learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. But even asking it to. I learned to search on Yahoo. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, Dan, we'll, we'll connect. We'll up. work with you. <laughs> we'll, we'll slow it down. I'll come to you in person. <laughs> <laughs> what did you hire you for? <laughs> yeah, just Google searching techniques. Um, like if you ask it to create me a meal plan this week, I want to do 100 carbs a day, 150 grams of protein, oh, and 50 wow. grams of fat. And I want to do seven days, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, create me a meal plan and my grocery list. And you can say, I hate eggs. It will build it for you. So you just, it's wow. anything. It's you amazing. About creating something. Go in here and just try and ask different ways, and you have to kind of build that. Space. And what's the website? I, I, I'll absolutely. send it to you. It's open. It's put it on. Put it on the comments. Openai.com. Um, there have to be more people that would like to know the website. Put it on the comments. I can't be the only one. Everyone's like, "What are you guys even talking about?" I'll send it to you here. <laughs> oh, so it's chat.openai.com. But anyway, this is you know I I I love where this conversation is going. I mean I I geek out over this stuff for sure. I little, just a quick fact, right before this podcast, I went and bought myself a, I broke down. I had to go buy myself a new computer. Oh. Dan and I had been talking about this for a long time. My computer was crashing. So I went ahead and just uh, bought me one. I love this excited. stuff. And we, I spent an insane amount of time at the computer store. But anyway. I bet, I, I bet your wires are very well bundled. You know what? This is a conversation Dan and I also had. I'll, <laughs> I'll let you in on this conversation. I'm I'm a little I I'm a perfectionist. I like my wires to be hidden, bundled, color coded, labeled. So I have a TV hanging in my office, and I have a a very nice floating computer setup. Everything is very well organized. Dan sent me a picture that sent me sent my brain like made me mad and upset for a long time. It was these cables that he has very little concern for lying on his floor. <laughs> and maybe I'll share that photo with everybody on the Facebook group. Yang yang. And it just <laughs> threw me off. It's like it's a me off. It was. So on that note, Baskar, I'm going to share one of the best books uh, that I read last year was Please called do. Building a Second Brain. Mm -hmm. This is where I learned about kind of this brain, you know, it's not supposed to be a storage tool, it's supposed to be a processing tool. And this, this guy, um, I think his name's Tiago Forte. The book's called Building Out. Tiago Forte. He had a brain injury. <laughs> there it is. Oh my God. I almost gave Vascar a heart attack. No, no, no. And I sent him a picture in return. Please don't share that picture, but it was better organized slightly, somewhat. But anyway, Tiago Forte, Building yep. a Second Brain, 100%. Yep. Buying it yep. today. It is so good. And this is my, just for some inspiration, we'll do um, my notes section. So I built my second brain in a tool called Notion. And just yes. for some inspiration, I love to cook. And so now all of my recipes that I've ever made I are all cook. organized in Notion. What did I do? How did I do it? And Did you want to we'll share that screen? Yeah, is, it, is it? Are your recipes okay to share with public? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Excellent. Hey, that's nice. super cool. Yep. So we've got these are all my notes, just overview. And, then and you one. and you created that with ChatGPT? Oh, no. no, that no was you know what? I probably could. This oh, is a yeah. site called Notion. It's kind of like a Play Doh database. You can make it whatever you want it to be. But this is where I keep my notebooks. And Thomas Frank had this template. So if you just search Thomas Frank Notion on um, YouTube, you'll find this. It doesn't have to be in here. It could be in Evernote. It could be in OneNote. It doesn't matter. 
But yeah, I'm, I'm a OneNote junkie. Oh, OneNote's great. Having a place for everything to find it. Because again, I have all these notes. I have all these ideas. I have all these things that come up. But if you don't write them down, they're gone. When forever. was the last right. time you did a Bernays sauce? I did a Bernays sauce uh, for Thanksgiving. Because really? I did uh, a smoked filet. Yeah, I'm a big uh, smoking uh, grilling gal. I judge. I, I secretly judge people who claim that they know how to cook on the quality of their Bernays sauce. <laughs> well, I'm down to teach you how to Google so I will make you filet with Bernays. How about that? Very nice. Very so nice. before, we, I know we're, we're, we're going to be at, at our, at our uh, time limit here soon. I did want to ask a few questions about your systems and how do you recommend people get started? Somebody has been running a business with just the bare bones, free, freemium tools. Yep. Freemium, they want to get tools. <laughs> freemium tools. Freemium tools. Yeah, it's a, it's it's in between <laughs> free and premium. Yep. <laughs> now, and you, they want to come to you and they want to say, "Hey, I'm ready to get organized. I want to take my business to the next level." Yep. How can you help? What do you offer? How can you help somebody wanting to be just a better business operator? Yeah. So the I have a couple different offers. The main offer that I'm really doing right now because it's the the biggest and everyone wants it is helping land investors start to finish, learn how to text to find leads. So from the very beginning, my team holds your hand. We, we don't necessarily build the CRM, but I am giving you CRM best practices is what I'm expecting for a follow-up cadence, start to finish. How do I pull a list, start texting, train a VA. You can't join the program unless you commit to having a VA do the actual texting. Cause it is, it's a lot of work. Um, and then get them into your system and make sure that we follow up. We have at least a three year follow up cadence set up and I, I help you design all that out. So that's um, one of my offers. And then we also have an offer where we do CRM implementations for real estate investors. Um, right now I've been working in a tool called Fresh Sales. It's kind of like a hybrid between a HubSpot and a pipe drive and a Salesforce. Definitely open to other uh, CRMs. We've done follow up boss implementations in the past. Um, we've worked, we've done some HubSpot stuff. It just gets really expensive and so does Salesforce. So that's kind of one of those things where if you're struggling and if it depends on kind of what level you're at and how many employees you have, but that's something I can kind of help our team can help work through and give you some recommendations on where we, what we think is a good fit, depending on your size. Awesome. I've, I want to throw that out there for the audience. I've heard amazing things about your team and your implementation, your- I've only your heard half amazing things. <laughs> just half. Just half. Well, at least they're somewhat good. That's great. Just <laughs> awesome. Truly, you know, I've, I've gotten great feedback. Obviously, you know, I'm in the similar space, not quite, not quite uh, as clearly set up to offer these services, but this is one of the things we do. And again, we do, we go down the same path. I just have different software offerings or the tools that we use. But it's, it's amazing. I mean, I've heard good things. I do at some point want to explore. I might just come to you and say, hey, I think I want to be organized better for my businesses. Oh, yeah. And I need Callum to, to do that for me. I love it. Well, I think I do. I do think we have a lot of synergies, Baskar. And, and one of the things for me, kind of where people are at, I, I really, the folks that are working with me have done at least six deals. They've done at least 200K. We've is that got, a requirement or, or just an average? It's a loose requirement. I just, okay. back to that kind of process piece, it's just mm -hmm. so hard to really, I don't want you to spend any money on an implementation of a tool if you don't know exactly what you want it to do. Right. So that's just a little bit of the um, buffer the piece. Yeah, but I know, Baskar, you have a great kind of CRM fundamentals course potentially that you put together that might be great for a beginner right. um, investor. That's it's not good. aimed at somebody who's been using CRMs at a very, you know, advanced level. No, it's a, it's a very beginner course, but it does get them started with the right fundamentals. Uh, love it, love it. If anyone wants to get a hold of Callan, REI Optimize, the information is scrolling down below. Her email address, her telephone number. Um, guys, please take advantage of these resources. It's a pleasure yeah. to be here. Um, obviously, this is at no cost to the audience, except if you find value, please do me a favor now and like and share to your personal walls. Um, go ahead and tag me, tag Callan, tag Bascar, tag School of Sharks, tag whoever the heck you want to tag. I don't care, but please let us know that you guys find find value in us, uh, us being here and putting this together. 
Um, mm -hmm. uh, last, last words of wisdom, anything that Callan Bascar, you'd like to share some practical nuggets. What can people do today in the next seven days that can positively impact their business or their lives? Go. Before, before Callan goes, I want I just wanted to add. Hey, ladies, go first. Calm down. No, no, I, no. Go ahead, Bascar. <laughs> age before beauty, right? That's right. Oh! That's right. Bascar so <laughs> I want to say, look, Callan, I've, I've heard I've heard excellent feedback about your services. I've heard people get great results. That's probably because you are experienced, highly experienced at what you do. You've delivered results. So I didn't want to just add this, that you have, you know, my support, our seal of uh, approval, if you will, just because a lot of people that are in, in your circle are also in my circle and have, 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 have vouched for your uh, services and the way you've, helped them grow their business. So 100% guys is, you know, Callan Callan's, uh, is the real deal here. It's awesome. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And likewise, you guys are incredible. Dan came on my mastermind. I have not had that many texts afterwards. Like, oh my God, I, that was the, the ultimate, that was the almost unbelievable information I've ever heard. Seriously. And these guys have been, are very, very successful real estate investors. So well, yeah, absolutely. Right. I love, I love, good hearing to hear. that. I love hearing that. So Sounds Kevin, good. Tell us, stage is yours. Tell us final words. Okay. Well, we've talked a lot about real estate. So I'm going to leave us on a little bit of a health wellness, opt human optimization nugget. Another book. You guys are going to be reading all the books after this. There's a book that's called The Comfort Crisis. And one of the things that's happening right now is we are not being stressed enough we're living this kind of cush 70 degree internal life. And when the human body isn't pushed to that stress point, we freak out, we get anxiety, we don't know how to handle situations, we're overthinking everything. So I have implemented uh, cold exposure into my life. I've been doing cold plunges, you can totally do cold shower. I know it sounds absolutely terrible. Um, but in terms of anxiety and just having more clear thinking, I cannot recommend the free thing, put it on cold 10 seconds, even if it's five seconds, I don't really care. Um, and then getting outside and seeing the sunlight early in the morning before 10 a.m. Do that, you earth, Kellen? Um, do you, do you, you practice like earthing? Hell yeah, Dan, I earth. Oh, I love yeah. it. We're rocking barefoot in the snow. Absolutely. Yes, we try to. Well, it's hard. I mean, it's cold here, but um, I try to get out in the sun. I listen to Huberman Lab podcast. He's absolutely phenomenal. Um, and then delay caffeine 90 minutes in the morning. Don't have it uh, right in bed because okay, caffeine, um, it, what, what it does is it, adenosine is the hormone that makes you feel sleepy. And so caffeine comes in and it takes all the adenosine and it puts over in a corner. So if you drink mm -hmm. caffeine right away, you still have that adenosine hormone. You're still feeling a little sleepy. If you wait 90 minutes, the adenosine's out of your bloodstream. Oh boy. This caffeine guy, just... <laughs> <laughs> You waited 20 minutes, hopefully. You waited till freaking five o'clock. <laughs> right. So I'll share something that I've been doing. Those who have been following a little bit of my journey, I started fasting January 1st. Love it. 20-hour fasts a day. Ooh, so, a day. So, ba so basically, it's just one meal a day. When yeah. that, that's really kind of what it comes down to. And I loved it. I've lost 26 pounds already. That's awesome, man. And I love it. I love it. I started incorporating cold showers. And earthing comes from my mama. She yeah. is a big tree hugging, bra burning, pot smoking, weed growing hippie. No, she doesn't smoke, yeah. but um, <laughs> she's uh, she's a big, big hippie to the point that one of my favorite pictures at my wedding, we were married outdoors, was her earthing Aww. on my wedding. Took the shoes right off. Right Took them right off. Right in the ground. I was like, Mom, what happened to your shoes? Did you lose them? She says, no, they're right here. I'll need them, honey. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Well, guys, thank you so much. I hope you guys have a prosperous evening. Please subscribe to Be Sharks. Please attack your deals. Please be proficient in what you do. Be experts in your field. And we'll see you guys in the next episode of Swim with the Sharks. Thank you so much, Callan. Thank you so much, Baskar. You guys thank have you a great one. Take care. Yeah.